Hi everybody, it's been a little while since I've made a video, so I just wanted to start by saying I hope you're all well, and thank you for sticking around, and for those who like and follow my Facebook page, thank you very much. So I wanted to share this project with you, it's a 3D printed sculpture from 3D Wicked, I've got links to their Patreon and uh, Facebook page in the description. I recently acquired a 3D printer, and I printed this in 1 8th scale. Um, this is my first ever figure uh, and there's been a big learning curve because predominantly I like to build robots and mechs but I had the best time painting and working on this and it was really fun. So what I thought I would do was take you through the process of how I prepared the model and got it ready to what you just saw there in the video. So I printed the model out and these are the parts that it comes in. The holes that you can see in some of them are where I've hollowed out the, the prints and made drain holes. A prime example of this is the bottom of the base. I filled each one of those holes with some styrene rod, cut them off and then sanded them down. After that I used an all purpose ready mixed filler, really nice and cheap and covered all those uh, blemishes. I then sanded that down and this is something that you don't necessarily have to do because it is under the base um, and some people have really good uh, ideas of covering it with like fan art and other things like that. This is just something I wanted to do because I knew I wanted to raise the base up at the end. And on the subject of holes and blemishes, if you've never seen a 3D print, what you will tend to find is when you remove the supports, you get little divots. Now, the way I supported these um, feet and a lot of the parts is I had these little divots hidden as best I could. This is just a little example of how I filled them and then sanded them down. And then at the end, uh, just adding a little bit of primer to show you that they're nice and smooth now. But I actually, as you can see on the front of the boot, there's actually two blemishes there that I missed. So that just goes to show that not everybody's perfect. Here are a few more divots that I had to clean up on the back of the base. I got lucky and was able to print this in one piece, which was great. Difficult with when it came to painting, but it removes things like seams and things that you have to deal with later. And I'd much rather just print it as one piece. Um, so these were all little divots I filled from the supports and the next image just shows when I've sanded those back and you see the little the little white marks and you might think this is minuscule and nobody will notice it but this is a make or break sometimes between a good finish and a poor finish just taking those little extra steps and if you're wondering which putty I use um, anything's good really but I use perfect plastic putty I think that's really good that's served me very well over the last few years what I'm showing here is the gaps between parts. Now this is nothing to do with Wicked, the file is absolutely flawless. This just happens with any model, if you've made any models in the past, there's always going to be gaps. Now, you could leave these and hope nobody notices, but in my experience I've found that if you take the extra time to close up these gaps, it'll help sell the illusion that this is one uh, unified piece rather than, you know, separate things glued together. And again, it's just taking the extra time. So I'll, I'll explain how I filled these gaps and, and sort of the results I got. So as a process of experimentation with this sculpture, the first gap sealing method I used was the perfect plastic putty that I mentioned before. Um, the biggest fear with this model is the detail was so high that I didn't want to fill it in. Um, so one arm, I used the perfect plastic putty with the other. I took some of my resin that I used to make the print and I gradually introduced it into the gaps and used a UV torch to cure it. And after priming the model, I would have said the UV resin was better at keeping the detail. The final method that I used was a little bit of a Hail Mary. I used some epoxy putty, put it in the gaps and as I glued the pieces together, it kind of spludged out and then I took some sculpting tools and then further refined it and got it back into that space. It was only because of larger gaps that I did this. I did this on the legs and it worked out really well. I don't feel like it did a great job on the neck. So I'll show you what it looked like when I primed it in a second. Uh, to prime these pieces, just to see how they look, this is a really fine mist of primer. I used AK Interactive Fine Primer and this is the first time I've used it and it was really good. As you can see there on the neck, it's hidden the gap, but then it doesn't look great. It looks a little bit um, unrefined, the details have become hidden, so this is something that we need to deal with. 
So I sanded it down, did as much as I could with my hobby knife and tools to get that detail back. And as you can see there, just on the shoulder, I had to re-sculpt some of that finer detail that um, was missing between the gaps. And it's little details like that will, that will help the model um, really come to life at the end. On the topic of re-sculpting things, as you can see here on the torso above the belt, there's two notches into the abdomen. Now this could be because I used the bust torso and not the statue torso, so it could be my fault, but I wanted to remove those. And on the back of the torso, between the pouches, you can see there's like a C, and that's not where something snapped off, that's just how this was sculpted. And it's nothing to do with Wicked, like I said, this could be because I used a different torso than the one it's intended to have. But I re-sculpted them with a little bit of epoxy putty and patience. It's not perfect. Um, I did actually use a fine mesh pushing into the lower abdomen, but you can't really see it here. It looks a little bit better in primer. And then at the back, I re-sculpted that part of his, um, his back. Um, this is definitely not anatomically correct, and I'm sure the pouch there would be digging into his kidneys, but it just helped sell the illusion that he was wearing this belt. And the, when you see it in the final pictures, you'll notice that it does look better. Once I'd fixed all the things I could find, I primed the model in black primer. This is UMP Black Primer from UMP Retail. And as you can see here, there are gaps between the abdomen um, and, and, and the pelvis and the legs. And that's because I've got blue tack in there holding this thing together. I wanted it to come apart so I could paint it in sections. Um, and the reason I've, I've blue tacked it together like this is because the next step for me was applying a zenithal highlight from, from the top essentially. And this is how that looked. So to achieve this, I used my airbrush and I sprayed Liquitex white ink in very thin layers from the top down. And this is to help us understand the volumes of the sculpture, place highlights and understand where the shadows should be, especially when we come to placing colors on the model. Now, some of you may be furious with me, but I didn't take any pictures or footage of me painting this sculpture. Predominantly because of my lack of confidence with um, painting and colour theory. I don't feel like I'm in a position to be <laughs> telling people, air quotes, how to paint. Uh, that being said though, if you would like me to share how I paint with the next sculpture, um, put a comment below and I'll be sure to do my best to explain how I did it. Um, I really like this picture because it really shows off those details within the Wicked Sculpt. This was printed at 1 8th scale at 0.05 layer height and you can see a little gap in the pelvis and the torso there um, but that's because there's blue tack holding it together. Um, so I'll show you some painted pictures, some final shots um, and just give a couple of shout outs as well to some other channels and pages that I look at. So the first person I'd like to mention is Matt's Models Customs, Matt Morozek. He puts together some incredible um, long videos where he doesn't hide anything, he breaks down his entire techniques. He works on some monster sculptures, much bigger than this. We're talking quarter scale or even bigger than that. Um, he's really, really knowledgeable and I encourage anybody who wants to improve to go look at his stuff. There's also Vince Vell Customs on YouTube, a really talented guy does a lot of remodeling of sculptures and painting and shares all his techniques, doesn't hide anything, definitely check him out. There is Hyper D on Facebook, that's Vitesse Chen. I'll put all these links in the description, but these are, these are really good sources of inspiration and people who spend a lot of time sharing their knowledge. There is The Creative Collector here on YouTube. I watch a lot of his videos. He, to get my 3D printer dialed in, I looked at his videos and it helped me a lot um, and his painting and building is great too and lastly ground affected on youtube a very talented and hardworking painter who is really good i really love his stuff if i could ever paint to that standard i would be really happy if you've made it this far in the video thank you very much for watching um, i just wanted to say that i recently attended scale model world in telford uh, and i took along cyclops and entered him into the sci-fi figure category I came away with a silver, which is I was really, really surprised at. I, I didn't think I would place after I saw all the other entries. There were some really, really good entries. Um, and it was a really good, you know, it was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun doing it. Um, I'm going I'm going to try to make a, a big project for next year to take to Scale Model World. Um, I've already got an idea of what I want to do. 
Um, so hopefully I'll do some filming for that and make it into a, a good sort of video series perhaps or something. Um, again, thank you so much for watching and uh, drop a message in the comments, say hi or anything you'd like me to do differently with these videos, I will do my best and have a great week.